Hey, welcome everyone to our online weekend worship service here at PCC. Thank you for welcoming us into your home and engaging with us as we navigate through these unprecedented and uncertain times. At PCC, our mission is to help people discover and experience the life-changing love of Christ. This morning, we're going to offer songs to encourage your faith, provide a relevant message, and help you connect. Each time we gather together, whether it be on a computer, a tablet, a phone, we have the opportunity to grow in our faith and our relationship with the Lord. So we invite you to lean into what God is doing in your life, to open yourself, to discover and experience his love. Welcome. Let's worship together.
Hey everyone, it's great to be engaging with you today. Here at PCC, our mission is to help people discover and experience the life-changing love of Christ. Thank you to everyone who is helping this mission be realized, both locally and abroad. I want to take a moment to let you know of a few things going on with which you can engage. With the number of food insecure families in our communities increasing daily, our friends at Mercer Street Friends are in need of financial donations, uh, specific food items, and volunteers to help put together packages for our neighbors who are in need of critical assistance right here in Mercer County. Are you able to help out? If so, I really want to encourage you to contact Mercer Street Friends at the email address provided on the screen. Our prayer team meets on Zoom every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. You'll find the Zoom link in our weekly announcements and on our website. Uh, during that time, we pray for the church services and the ministries at PCC. We pray for our community, our local outreach and world missions. Uh, we pray for the prayer requests that are submitted. Uh, we pray for everyone and what we're going through in this COVID-19 pandemic. And if you would like someone to pray with you or for you, we invite you to drop in and spend just a few moments and let us pray for you and your specific need. We look forward to connecting with you. I also want to invite you to join us following our Sunday service for our Coffee Connection. It's an opportunity to catch up together. Uh, the links for the Coffee Connection and all the announcements are provided in our Facebook and YouTube posts, as well as our weekly email. I also want to remind you, that as you are able, I really want to encourage you to give up your gifts and tithes and offerings. You can do that online through our website, through the PCC app. You can text to give, or you can mail in your gifts, tithes, and offerings to the church. It is a great way to continue to support the ministries here at PCC, as well as provide hope and encouragement to those in need as we offer critical assistance through this difficult season. Later in the service, as we do every week, we have the opportunity to participate in communion together. So we invite you to gather whatever elements you have readily available to you. And as we prepare to celebrate the love Jesus demonstrated for us, we'll do that together through communion.
from the past your bleak of grace a mighty river flowing upwards from a deep but empty grave so I will praise you on the mountains oh, I will praise you on the mountains in the you're the summit where my feet are. I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven when my heart is in the heart. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Roberto Sanchez. I'm the youth pastor here at Princeton Community Church, and I'm so glad to be with you on this Sunday morning, so glad to be able to be uh, ministering to you virtually the way we are, right where you are, being able to bring you God's word, um, being able to encourage you this weekend. This week, we will discover and experience the redeeming qualities of adversity through the story of Saul's conversion. All of us can relate to Saul. One reason is that as believers, we all have a used-to-be story. That is, we used to be someone completely different before we were captured by the love and transformative power of Jesus Christ. We used to be angry. We used to be liars. We used to lack character. We used to fill in the blank. Saul will eventually become the Apostle Paul that we've come to know. But today in Acts 9, in the selected scripture we will be studying, we will see who he used to be. He used to be a murderer. He used to be self-centered. He used to be a hater of the church. However, God used divine adversity to interrupt Saul's life. God redeemed Saul's life and fully transformed him. We learn today that uh, there is a redeeming nature to the adversity that we face day in and day out in our lives. We will see through Saul's conversion that, that God redeems our focus and motivation, that God redeems our purpose and identity, and that God redeems our perception of suffering. We understand that Saul was a Jew of Jews. He was an educated man and very high up in the religious echelon of his time. Saul was a Pharisee and Sadducee. Which, simply put, means he had attained honor and status as a prominent leader in the Jewish community. Along with this great status came great pride. Saul was a proud man. He had every right to be. By all accounts, he was a rule follower. He lived by God's law. And he never broke God's law. He obeyed all the laws strictly. The thing is, though, he didn't embody the spirit of the law. But today we will see Jesus himself encounter Saul in a way that would change his life and ours forever. That has exponential value for us right now in the adversity that we may be facing. He was about to capture his heart as only God could do. He was about to teach Paul through adversity what the focus of the Christian life is really about. He was about to show him that his motivations were all wrong. And don't we all need that sometimes, to shed light on our motivations? He was about to redeem Saul's focus and motivation. And this is where we will begin. Let us pray. God and Father, we love you 
and we thank you for this day. God, as you allow us to go deep into your word, we pray that you reveal to us what is necessary for us to take away from this day, from this scripture in this moment. Allow us, God, to break down the barriers that prevent us from knowing you more, from having the peace and the joy that you offer us through your son, Jesus Christ, in a relationship with him. Allow us, God, to be ministered to by your word and your spirit as we meet today in all the locations we find ourselves in. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We will be in Acts chapter 9 to begin with, verses 1 through 9. And the Bible says, But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Huh. Enter adversity. See, in verses 1 to 2, we see that Saul was laser-focused. Saul was focused on eliminating what he perceived to be a threat to the religious order that was in place. A threat to all he knew to be was right. He got permission from the high priest to kill those who were followers of the way or followers of Jesus. After all, these Jesus followers were were going around declaring that that Jesus was king, that Jesus was God, and most of all, that he was resurrected from the dead, promising eternal life to those who believed in him. This was a hard pill for a religious Jew to swallow. After all, they were the chosen ones. They were the ones who would be saved by their rules, and their way. And so Saul was motivated to end this threat and to shut down these so-called Jesus followers. In Saul's mind, this was blasphemy. He wouldn't have it. Can you imagine then the scene that we've arrived at in Scripture where Jesus himself interrupt Saul's life. He stops him dead in his tracks and confronts him. Jesus confronts him for persecuting his people. He blinds him, and then the once proud and determined man is carried off by the hand like a feeble babe. Huh. Friends, there was no other way to get Saul's attention. Jesus had to enter Saul's life in dramatic fashion to redeem Saul's life, his focus, and his motivation. See, God does not just stand around idly as those that he has chosen go about taking matters into their own hand because he's a sovereign God with a perfect plan for our life and for our good. Sometimes God interrupts our life and introduces adversity so that we might be redeemed, so that our focus and motivations might be redeemed for his glory and our good. 
so that we can adjust our focus and our motivations to match his perfect plan. This is what was going on with Saul. This is what may be going on in our adversity today. And an unloving God would leave us to our own devices. A loving God, however, would rather introduce adversity to capture and restore our focus. My question for all of us today is, where is your focus today? Is your focus on the circumstance? Is your focus on the loss of comfort that you may be experiencing? Is the focus on the things that you're lacking in the material world that you're missing out on? What if our focus could be on what God is trying to refocus our mind and our souls to reorient the direction of our life for his glory and our good? We also learn, though, through the story of Saul's conversion, that God uses adversity to redeem our purpose and identity. See, later on in chapter 9, verses 14 to 19, we see that Jesus moves from confronting Saul to restoring Saul into the apostle Paul we have come to know today. See, he instructs a faithful servant of the Lord, Ananias, to go restore Saul's sight. And he brings him out of the adversity he was experiencing and into the new purpose and identity that he has established for him. And he's ready to do that for you today. When Jesus instructs Ananias to go to Saul and restore his vision, Ananias is fearful of doing this because he already knows that Saul was on a rampage. He's, quite frankly, scared of Saul's intentions. But in verse 15 of this same chapter, the Lord says to Ananias, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So no longer would Saul be known as a persecutor of the church. No. He would now be known as a follower of Jesus Christ. See, in his adversity, Jesus is literally changing his purpose and identity. He could be doing that for you today. More than that, he would be known for bringing the gospel to the Gentiles, to all the non-Jewish world. See, you and I, we, we might not understand the impact of this or, or even the irony. But the reality is that Saul's encounter with Jesus and the adversity of those three days he spent without sight were instrumental in changing his heart. He no longer identified exclusively with his religious titles or his ethnic, ethnic pedigree. Saul, transformed by the risen Jesus, was given a new purpose and a new identity and a new reason for being, a new reason to wake up every morning. He would be the one who would bring the good news of salvation everywhere that he went. He would be the one who would bring the good news of salvation and eternal life to kings and Gentiles everywhere that he stepped foot. Wow, what an honor and a privilege. Later on in the gospel letters, he would expound on the fact that he counted all of his accomplishments and titles and such as rubbish when compared with the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ personally. Friends, just maybe we can learn from Scripture today that God uses adversity to redeem our purpose and our identity for his glory and that 
although it may be difficult to understand that this too is for our good. Paul, or the future Paul, would certainly learn that in the days and years to come. The question is, are we? Some years ago, when God abruptly ended my military career, I found myself lost and without purpose. I thought, how could God let me go through this? But friends, I ran to God in my time of need, and he revealed a new path for my life that I hadn't been thinking about, one that was marked with a different kind of service, one that was marked with a call to ministry, and a life that was much better than the one I had envisioned for myself. See, maybe today you need to be reminded that that God can use any time of adversity in your life to redeem your purpose and identity for his glory. Maybe the path looks different for you going forward. Maybe you don't need to just go back to normal and the way things were. Maybe normal can be better. Could it be that God is pointing you in a different direction? One that honors him and satisfies you? Not all of us are called to ministry like I was, but all of us are called to obedience and service to God. What does that look like for you? What does it look like for you to ask God to reveal to you how he may be using this time to redeem your purpose and identity in Christ right where you are? It's different for all of us. But consider meditating on this today. Consider asking God to reveal this to you today. And look away from adversity and toward the risen Savior who has a plan and a purpose for your life. And finally, friends, through Saul's conversion, we learn that God uses adversity to redeem our perception of suffering. There's a quote that I heard recently that says, everyone wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And friends, hear me out on this. I'm not making light of how painful these times can be for us or what you're personally going through or the kind of sacrifices we are facing and uh, facing them bravely, quite frankly. But time and time again, In Scripture, the Bible reminds us and we read about the suffering that can and will be a part of our journey as believers. See, Saul was no different in this story. Jesus, speaking of Saul, told Ananias, For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. That's in Acts 9, chapter 16. In fact, Jesus makes it clear that to follow him is to suffer. In Matthew 16, verse 24, Jesus says, or the Bible says, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Saul suffered for Christ. He endured uncertainty. He endured hardships because he was convinced that eternity was worth it. That the surpassing benefit of knowing Jesus and making him known and seeing people's lives being touched and restored by God's spirit was much better and much more worthwhile than any little thing that we could be suffering in life or any big thing. In other words, he was convinced that the sorrows and the hardships of this world were worth the joys and celebration of eternity. He knew and grasped what many of us find hard to know and grasp. That in the light of our eternal inheritance in the kingdom of heaven, our current condition and circumstances are not worth snatching our joy. 
Friends, we'll spend more time in eternity where the Bible reminds us that there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain than all the time we could ever spend on this earth going through the things that we go through. As a matter of fact, Paul puts it like this in Philippians 3, verse 8. He says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. As we wrap up our time together, let us consider the reality that in times of adversity, we can turn to God who has redeemed our focus and motivations as he did with, Paul, with Saul, who has redeemed our purpose and identity and who will see us through all that we face now and in the future right into eternity. He is all we need. Turn to him. Turn to him today. Cry out to him right where you stand. Allow him to comfort you and to direct your path. And friends, turn to us today. Your brothers and sisters that are here praying for you, wanting to walk through this life with you, wanting to walk through this adversity with you. We are the ones indwelt by the Spirit. We are the community of believers here at Princeton Community Church who want nothing more than to glorify Christ by loving you through every circumstance that you find yourself in. And today, and this circumstance, is no different. Reach out to us. We're not far away. We're but an email or a phone call from a friend that loves you. And finally, friends, earlier this week, a close sister in Christ pointed me to Romans verse 5. Um, excuse me, chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, which says this. But rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So friends, that is something worth celebrating on this Lord's Day. Respond to God. Recline in his presence. Peace be with you. Hey, friends, in just a few moments, we're going to celebrate communion together as we do on a weekly basis here at Princeton Community Church. So gather the elements that you have gathered together for the purpose your crackers, your juice, whatever it is that you use to remember God's blood shed and body broken for you on the cross. Thank you so much. Peace be with you.
Paul wrote these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take and let's eat the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. Let's drink together this morning. Paul continues. He says, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. How amazing it is that we have the opportunity to proclaim the death and the life of the Lord together. Thank you so much for engaging with us today. If you're new here at PCC, I want to welcome you and invite you to click on the link and let us know that you engaged with us. It's a great way to connect and you can learn more about PCC. If you made a faith decision today, accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, renewing your faith and commitment to the Lord, or if you would just like prayer, uh, we would love to know that you took that step so we could walk alongside you and pray for you. You can submit your prayer request at the links provided. We also want to encourage you to grab a cup of coffee and join us for our coffee connection time. We're going to do that on Zoom in just a few moments. Uh, there's a link provided on the YouTube and Facebook post as well as in the PCC email. And you can join with others for about 10 or 15 minutes of just hanging out together. It's a great time each week, and so we hope that you will join us. Take care, be safe, have a great week. Peace be with you. Mm -hmm.